without you supporting. So if you are on right now, please go ahead and share this. Just press the share button real quick. Share it to your your friends, to your family so that they can jump on as well. Because I believe that tonight, um, tonight's message is going to be impactful as well. So if you can go ahead and share this with someone that you may know, press share so somebody else can jump on and um, go ahead and press like so that people can see it. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and let's get started with prayer. I've been I've been really just being real honest and transparent. I've been uh, just in a place of expectation of what God wants to do. Um, I don't know about you, but just looking at the world today, we look at church and we look at um, how even the state of the church is changing. And we're looking at so many other things. We look at our world. We look how the economy, where the economy is. We see eggs, thousand uh, dollars a carton. We see, you know, we see all these things happening around us. But the true question is, what is God saying, and what is God really trying to do through us? Um, I believe that we are vessels uh, on behalf behalf of God, on behalf of the one who created us. And if we are a vessel, if we are an instrument, we have to be able to be used by God. Uh, to be used by God is whatever God wants to do through me. I have to be open and I have to be free enough to allow God to do it through me. And I don't know about you, but I want God to use me. Um, if you want God to use you, say, use me. Just put that God, use me in the chat. Just say, God, use me. If you are okay uh, with God using you um, in this season, if you want God to, to, to use you as an instrument, and when I think of God using me as an instrument, I'm a keyboard player. Um, so I think about just how I take a piano or a keyboard and how I play it. And when I play a keyboard, I play it, um, I'm playing, the keyboard is making the sound that, that, I, the player, want to wanted to make. It, uh, it has a melody and it has songs that are coming out of the keyboard, not just because the keyboard is sitting there, but because me, the player, is, are, is causing um, certain chords and things to happen to make the music come out of that keyboard. You are an instrument of God. And we are just to be the instrument. We, we're not to play ourselves, but we want God to use us, to play through us, to sing through us, to preach through us, to minister through us, to talk through us, to use us in our homes, to use us when we talk to our kids. God, use me. And so my desire has been, God, I don't, I don't care what it is, but how you want to play through me, how you want to use me. God, I'm giving you the freedom to use me. God, I'm giving you the freedom to make me your instrument. I am a vessel. I'm not a vessel for anything else. I'm a vessel that's willing and ready to be used by God. So I don't know, you know, why I'm going that direction. And I see y'all. I see you. Uh, uh, Marvy, I hope I'm Ma Mary V, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Keep using me and my family. We're here. That's that's the that is the 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 prayer uh, the forfeiting our blessed illustration impacted me greatly. We are his vessels. That's good. Yes. We have to be used by God. And many of us, Key, I see you. Many of us are walking through life and we are supposed to be the instrument of God, but we're trying to tell God how to use us. That's like my keyboard. Once again, going back to that, saying, no, nah, don't play that chord on me because I don't like that, that specific chord. Play this chord. But I'm like, no, uh, you are the instrument. And if we are to be the instrument of God and we are to walk and, and and what he wants us to do. All we have to do is tell God, God, use me how you want. I, I no longer am I putting the stipulations on you and tying your hands and holding your hands, but God, I want you to use me how you want. This world is not getting better. And I don't want to bring a damper or depression on you, but this world is not getting better. But here's the key. You are the answer. God wants to use you as the answer to your world, to your sphere of influence, to um, to your job, to to your family, to your four in your home, to the people that you know. God wants to use you as an influence to your sphere. And when we talk about change the world, we're changing our world. Think about it. You have a sphere of influence. You have people that you know, you have people that know of you, that God wants to use you to change someone's life. And you don't know if the thing that God is asking you to say, 
You don't know if the message that God has told you to type on your Facebook page or, or use your social media as a platform for his glory, the, the thing you, that's been on your heart that you, you do in a reel or, or in a video or you sing something or whatever you do, you don't know how that can change someone's demeanor and, can, and it can change someone's life. You have the ability and the authority to change the world by being by letting God use you. So that's that's my that's been my prayer that God use me for your glory. And that's what we're going to pray before we jump into uh, what we're talking about tonight. But let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we are your vessels and we are here, God, for your glory. God, we are here to give you glory. We are here to uh, be your manifestation and for you to use us. Father, we thank you now, God, for giving us breath in our body. We thank you now for giving us the activity of our arms, our legs, our limbs. God, we thank you now for letting us be in our right mind. And tonight, Father, we're giving you the authority. We are giving you the ability and the right to use us. We want to be used by you, Lord. We are your instrument. God, we are your vessel that we want you to use us. God, make us who you want us to be. God, use us as you will use us in Jesus' name. We give you the authority to have your way in us. God, we love you tonight. We bless you tonight. We ask that you have your way in us. Let us be, God, who you want us to be. Let us walk in the purpose that you have for us. Let us walk in the authority that you have for our lives. Let us be who you have called us to be. And we won't tie your hands, God. We will do everything that you've called us to do in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. And I don't I don't really know who that was for, but I, yeah, my wife just said, have your way, God. Yes, Yomika, you said, yes, Lord, you're best. That's right. I don't know who that's for, but let God use you. Stop holding his hands. Stop telling God what you want him to, what you want to do. No, say, God, what you want is what I want. The Bible says, commit your ways to, to the Lord and he will exalt, he will exalt it. He will, he will bless it. You have to commit your ways to the Lord. You've been wondering why you've been feeling so, and I'm sorry, I'm going in a different direction, but you've been wondering why you've been feeling frustrated in the direction that you're going. You've been wondering why it's been feeling hard. You know, it's like a like you're walking up a hill uh, and it's really because you're trying to tell God what to do where God is simply saying, just relax and, and be and walk in me. Let me guide you. Let me walk with you. Let me tell you what's needed. When I say go left, go left. When I say go right, go right. Stop going in the opposite because you think you know what you want. But the quicker we give over to the will of God, the quicker we give over to what God has for us, really, really, <laughs> he will. He will bless you. And you will start to see, like we talked about last week at the pop-up, you have sweatless victory, where it's not it's not really this hard work that you have to do, where you're like you're you're operating in toil, and that's what we talked about. We talked about not toiling but trusting. A lot of the reasons for us toiling, which means to work in our own strength, to to exert energy, but toil is also a part of the curse that happened when Adam. And Eve sinned. God told man that you will have to toil to grow food, to grow crops, or basically to produce things to live. But he does, but when Jesus came to free us from the curse, he freed us from that. So no longer do we have to toil. No longer do we have to work in our own strength, but now we're working in the strength of God. And so here's the thing: the, the, the time of working against God is over. This world is, is not getting better like we said. It didn't get better. But we are looking, I think I saw Charles asked, uh, did it freeze? I hope it didn't freeze on some people. If you can still see me, just put in the chat. You can still see what's going on. Um, but we, we are in a position to where we have to obey God. Obey God. Let me know that you can still hear me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. So let's jump into it. So here it is. Uh, tonight, y'all, I want to talk about, we've been in a Dig Deeper series, uh, and, to, and this is the last week of, of our Dig Deeper series, um, and, I, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I want to talk about the distraction to deeper. 
the distraction to deeper. Um, many times in our life, what, uh, we fight distractions every single day. Uh, we fight, and I and I'll be honest with you. It felt like for some reason this week I, I was just just more distracted. I don't know why, and I don't even know if it was social media. You know, I don't know what it was, but I just felt just distracted in certain things. I would sit down to to do my homework, and I would just feel distracted, or you know, even studying. You know, for certain things, even for tonight, just felt distracted. And I know that's a a trick of the enemy, but God is calling for us to have focus uh, in this season. But what I'm gonna what I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna expose certain things that keep us from going deeper in God. And so the distractions to deeper, the closer you get, here it is, uh, to the will of God for your life, the more distractions will come to get you off track. I'm gonna say it again: the closer you get to the will of God for your life, the more distractions will come to get you off track. Here it is: distractions are meant to keep you from deeper. And the, the, the author of distractions is the enemy. The author of distractions for our lives is our adversary. It is our enemy. It's the devil. He comes to distract us from going deeper in God because he knows if you really lock in and you really get planted if you really uh, keep away from the things that go to the left and the right of you, he knows that once you lock in, Key, that is going to be nothing that can hold you back. Uh, uh, Kiera, he knows that once you really lock in, that is going to be nothing that's going to going to stop you from doing what God has for you. That once you really lock in to doing the will of God that you're going to be unstoppable. Most of the times, the enemy knows who we're going to be more than who, more than us. It's like he can see you in your perfected self, but we are looking at ourselves in our present. And he knows if you get to where you're really supposed to get, it's going to be a blow to his kingdom. And we cannot allow distractions um, to keep us from doing what God is calling us to do. We cannot allow distractions to stop us from being everything God wants us to be. We cannot allow distractions to, to prevent us from purpose. And so tonight, we're going to talk about the distractions to deeper so that we can counteract those distractions and do what God is calling us to do. So here it is. In order to, when you're fighting um, a fight, and you're going against the adversary, you're going against your enemy, um, the first thing you got to understand is you got to understand the character of your enemy. You have to understand the character of the person that you're fighting. And many of us, we lose um, in the fight because we don't really understand the person who we're fighting against. See, we we think we're fighting against flesh and blood. We think we're fighting against um, our, our, our neighbor or, uh, or the person who, who, who's acting up at our job or the family member who can't you know, stay out of our business. We think that we're fighting that, but really you're fighting principalities. You are fighting spiritual, you were in a spiritual fight. I see it. Yes, he knows what we are capable of doing to him. That's right. We, we, are, we are thinking that we're fighting flesh and blood, but you're, in actuality, we are in a spiritual fight. And what we understand about the enemy, and once again, if you're watching and you're looking, go ahead and share this, please. Um, but what we understand about the enemy is what I see is the enemy is, is, is a distraction because he is, um, it's like a, a, a person who really has no strength. He's a lion with no teeth. Here it is. The, the enemy is as a roaring lion. So when we look at the enemy, we think he really has power and authority. But if you have God living on the inside of you, if you have Jesus living in you, the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So the power that you really think that the enemy has, you are really giving him his authority because he is as a roaring lion. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he will lift you up uh, in honor. That's right, toothless cat, that's good. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Eight, verse eight, stay alert. 
Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. So there's the first thing. Um, he's prowling like a roaring lion. What's up, Renee? I see you on Zoom. The enemy is prowling like a roaring lion. It didn't say he was a lion. It didn't say, like, like Yomika said, he's he's toothless. He he's growling and he's 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 doing all these things to distract you, to get you off your, your guard. That's right, Marvy. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Yes, he's trying to get you off of track. He's trying to keep you from doing what God is calling you to do. So he's growling and he's and he's causing things to happen. He's causing your kids to act up. He's causing your marriage to, to get unwound. He's causing your wife or your husband to start saying that one thing that they can say that makes you like kind of like go off a little bit. And the thing about it is their husband and your wife, we, we, we know that one thing to say uh, when we need to say it. But he's he's distracting you from your purpose. He's distracting you from your purpose in your marriage to be to be loving, to to be selfless, to 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 love your children, to raise your kids, to do what you need to do to do what God is calling you to do. But he's causing distractions to keep you from your purpose. So the enemy, his characteristic is he is as a roaring lion, or he is like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So the Bible then says in verse nine, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. So me and you, everybody that you watch me, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you for jumping on and we're together. And the Bible says that we are all going through this same thing. We have to remember that. And that's why we got to keep each other in prayer. That's why we have to stay connected. That's why we have to stay in connection. That's right, Tamir. He has no power. The enemy does not have any power. So when he comes against you, and this is even for people who are in demonic warfare, when the enemy comes against you, plead the blood of Jesus because he has no authority over you. He is as a roaring lion. We plead the blood of Jesus. We we cast out demons. We cast out devils with the Holy Spirit. So here it is. So he is as a roaring lion. The next thing, if we're looking at the characteristics of our adversary, the enemy, the devil, is he always comes to distract. The Bible says um, in 1 John 2, 12, for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life which is not of the father, but is of the world. So the enemy comes to distract you with the lust of the flesh. That's things that tentilate your, 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 your senses, your five senses. Um, that is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye are things that tentilate what you can see. And, and, it, and it makes you uh, want to uh, go after things uh, that, that don't belong to you or that you're not needed to, to take. It's what you can see. And the enemy wants you to be able to look at things, to see um, certain things that are happening in the world and certain things that are happening in, in the secular side and make you want those things, which gets you distracted from what God has for you. And then it says, and the pride of life, pride is huge. He, he wants to get you off kill. When he was talking to Jesus, after Jesus had uh, been tempted, was being tempted by him, he had fasted and everything that the enemy was throwing at him was going towards one of these things. He said, you know, cast yourself off of this stone. Uh, call the angels to come and lift you up. Uh, eat, eat this bread. Turn that stone to, bre uh, to bread. And Jesus, every time the enemy would try to distract him, Jesus would quote what the word of God said. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And so anytime the devil would try to distract Jesus and he would try to come after him with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. That's right, Tamir. He used the word. What do we have to do to fight the enemy? Because we are not fighting flesh and blood. We got to know the word. Yomika, Yomika, we must know the devices of the serpent, enemy, the devil, oftentimes, uh, often comes very subtle, seems innocent. Do not be blindsided. That's right. That's right. That is good. I want to read what um, Renee said. 
Amen. Quote the word. Use the word. I have um, uh, certain. I have certain scriptures that I already have. Just like it's a sword, you know, in my gun, in my holster. Um, you know, if I if I feel as if I'm being I'm being um, if I'm fearful, I said for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. There are certain things that I have to bring back to my remembrance when I feel the enemy is coming after me to tempt me to 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 cause me to get off of of, of my kilt. I got to use the word. That's why it's important for us to know the word of God. The enemy doesn't want us to know. You, you wonder why when it's time for you to read the Bible, you always get sleepy. And you wonder why when it's time for you to, to look at God's word or to get into God's word, there's distractions. Like I was telling you, I was experiencing this week. It just felt like every time I was supposed to read, distracting, kids crying, kids sick, this, that, everything's happening. That's not a happenstance. But the enemy doesn't want you to get in the word so you have no authority and power. So our, our enemy, the adversary, he comes to distract with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. He is as a roaring lion. He has no power. He, he's a toothless, a toothless lion. He has no authority over you. Now, if you don't belong to Jesus, then you are in his camp. So he has authority. But once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he's living inside of you, you have Holy Spirit. He has no authority, and you have all power because you have Jesus living inside of you, all right? So when he distracts, it makes you take detours. So distractions always make you take detours. When you're driving on the highway and you get distracted from your GPS or you see something and you miss the, a, a turn or you miss getting off of the exit that makes you make a detour and you have to go to another exit and when you detour it causes delays what i understand about the enemy what i understand about the devil is he knows that he cannot stop you from the purpose of god but all he wants to do is to distract you so you will take detours which lead to delays and if he could delay you getting to that place that god has called you to be and to delay you being in the timing that god has had for you, then he's done his job. And so we cannot allow the enemy to distract us from deeper. The enemy knows that if he can distract you from going deeper, he can distract you from reaching your destiny. But I want you to put in the chat, I will reach destiny. I will reach destiny. Put it in the chat. I will reach destiny. Come on, put it, put it there. I will reach reach destiny. I know it's a lot of words, so I'm giving you a little bit of time, because I, but I want you to put it in there. I will reach destiny because he, the enemy is trying to keep you from reaching your destiny. That's right. I will reach destiny. I'm going to reach everything that God has for me. I'm not giving up. I'm not allowing the enemy to have me. I'm not going to give in what he used to take me out with, the distractions that he used to get me with, the phone calls that he used to, to, to get me off with, the people that he used to send in my life to make me get off, the things that I used to do that I'm not doing no more. I will reach destiny and I'm not going to allow distractions to keep me from going deeper in God. I'm not going to allow distractions to keep me from from being blessed this year. I'm not going to allow distractions to keep me from everything that God wants me to have. It's not going to happen. And you got to get to a place in your life where you tell yourself it's not going to happen. I'm going to do what God is calling me to do. I don't care what's happening around me. I'm going to be focused on what the Lord wants for me and what God has in my life. I'm going to stay focused because I will reach destiny, destiny. And the devil is so scared of you. You want to know why you're experiencing depression and you want to know why you're experiencing the things that you're experiencing. It seems like you keep losing and you can't win. It's because the enemy, the devil is scared of you because once you wake up and once you realize who you really are, he can't stop you. But he wants you to get off 
kill. He wants you to get off. Tamara, and the devil is crafty. Those distractions could be the people you love. Stay focused. That's right. The devil is very crafty. Um, the thing about the devil is that he, 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 he is not as creative as people give him. If you really think about it, and I'm just thinking about myself, many times the enemy is always trying to get you with the same thing. He might use a different way to get that across, but it's really the same type of distraction in a new, in a, in a new package, you know, and we have to see through the enemy's distractions. We got to see through, you know, what he's trying to, because the Bible says we are tempted by our own lust. Um, and so there are times, so he evidently knows you and he knows what to distract you with, right? Same person, same situation. What's up, DJ? Same thing. The enemy's trying to get you with. He tries to distract you. That's right. It's always normally the same thing. But, you know, it's like we we are like the, the dumb sheep who keep falling into, you know, the thing we have to 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 smarten up and we have to see that if the enemy is distracting us, we got to be like Jesus. When he was talking to Peter, when Peter was trying to keep Jesus from from going to the cross, he said, get behind me. And we have to be the same way. Get behind me, Satan. The Bible says if you resist the devil, he will flee. The problem with most of us is that we don't want to resist because it feels good. And I'm here to tell you tonight that you cannot let distractions keep you from where God wants you to be. God has a calling on your life. God has something special for you. And the enemy is trying to distract you to keep you from doing what God wants you to do. So here it is. Here's the scripture, Philippians 3, 15 through 16. This is where we're going and we're almost done, promise you. So let's keep focus on that goal. Verse 15, those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. So here it is. If I want to go deeper in God, I have to fight distractions. I have to fight distractions and I have to combat the things that come to distract me. So here is how you do it. Here's how we combat the things that come to distract us from the purpose that God has for our life. Here's how we we, we fight the things that come to distract us from the, 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 the plan that God has for our life. You There's a calling on your life. No, if you are still breathing, if you are still alive, like I always say, you are not too old to fulfill what God has for you. You just got to figure it out. You have to walk with God. You have to understand, you know, what, what, are, what is, your, what are you doing? Sometimes the assignment may change, but your purpose stays the same, but you might have a different assignment. This might be an assignment to this. I might be doing this now. I might be, um, you know, asking God, okay, God, I'm in between seasons. God, what do you have for me? What do you want me to do? I may just be someone who's encouraging others. I may be someone who God is using to, to show others the, the goodness of God and kindness. I may be the person who God wants to use to, to help my family, to help my family members. I, that, I might be the person that God is using right now to launch something or to birth something or to launch a business or to, to, to have an, whatever, whatever it is that God is calling to do. Don't be distracted but do what he's calling you to do with all your heart. So that's the number one is discover your purpose. One, if I'm going to combat the distractions, I have to discover my purpose because when you know who you are, it's hard to be distracted by who you're not. When you know who you are, it's really hard to be distracted by who you are not. When someone calls you by something that is not your name, you don't look because they're not calling your name. So if, if someone called me John or Louie or, or Susie or Jeff, I'm not looking to the left because that's not my name. But as soon as they say Alex, I'm looking like, what's up? It's the same thing. When you discover your purpose and you know who you are, 
God can call you, but anyone else who calls you outside of who you are, it's no need for you to look and be distracted because you know why you here, why are you here, why you are here. You know, in this season, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, in this season, God has me planted uh, in this ministry. God has me planted right here doing this or that. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. So the other things that come to call my name and to distract me from doing what I know God is calling me to do, I'm not looking to the left and I'm not looking to the right because I am focused on what God has for me. I've got to discover my purpose to not fall to distract distractions by knowing who I am so I'm not distracted when other things arise to take me off of that. The second thing I have to do is I have to, too, I have to drown out distractions. How do I drown out distractions? What's up, Miss D? I drown out distractions by staying focused on Jesus. I drown out distractions by staying focused on the Lord. Many times we get distracted because we're looking everywhere else except for to Jesus, who is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. I want to read this uh, because I was thinking about Peter. And the Bible talks about how when, Pete, when Jesus was uh, walking on water, um, uh, the disciples were in a boat and, 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 and the disciples saw Jesus. They thought he was a ghost and they saw Jesus walking on, on the water. And one disciple out of all of them had enough faith and gumption to, to get out the boat, to be like Jesus. He was so focused on Jesus, but something happened. Matthew 14, 25 through 33. It says now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea and the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were troubled saying it's a ghost and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I do not be afraid. And Peter it's something about Peter, y'all, Peter, this boy, I mean, Peter, it says, answered him and said, Lord, if it is you command me to come to you on the water. 29. So he said, come, this is Jesus talking. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning, beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. What I, what I saw with this was I saw someone who had faith in the Lord, enough faith to get out of a boat in the middle of a storm. <laughs> Renee, you got it. To get out of a boat in the middle of a storm and, and want to do what he saw Jesus doing. He was not distracted at one point and he was focused on Jesus enough to say, I want to do what you're doing. But the Bible says that he saw the boisterous winds. The question is, how do you see boisterous winds? You don't see boisterous winds, but you see the reaction or the effects of the wind. You see the trees moving and you see all these things happening and all these things are doing is distracting you from keeping your eyes on Jesus. Peter took his eyes off the Lord at the wrong time and he began to sink. I'm here to tell you, if you want to keep away from distractions, you if you you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. You have to keep your eyes on the Savior. As Renee says, sometimes we lose sight of the mark and let the enemy distract us. We have to keep our eyes on what God is telling us to do and not be distracted by the boisterous winds, not be distracted by the phone calls that come to tell you that you can't do something, not be distracted by the people who may be talking about you or the people who you may think are going to talk about you when you do this, what God is calling you to do, or, or what could go wrong, or if this, if I do this, what will happen? You cannot be distracted by the boisterous winds. You cannot be distracted by the effect 
effects of what the wind has, but you have to keep your eyes on the Lord. You have to keep your eyes on your relationship with the Lord. Keep your eyes in prayer. Keep your eyes in worship. Keep your eyes when you're studying the word. Keep your eyes on Jesus so you are not distracted. The distractions that keep you from deeper. It kept Peter from going deeper out to Jesus. He was distracted, but we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. The third thing we have to do is we have to discipline our ear to hear God. Um, when I discipline my ear to hear God, I'm focusing on what God is saying and I'm and I'm drowning out everything else. We have to tune everyone out except what God is saying. This happens when you know God has spoken to you. This happens when you really know really deep down inside that God has spoken to you. What this means is you have to tune everything else out except what God told you. If God spoke to you, you've got to stand on what he said. If God spoke to you, you have to stand on his word for your life. And when the distractions come to say, maybe that did, maybe he didn't say that, or maybe you're not supposed to do this, or maybe you're not supposed to do that, you have to discipline your ear so you hear God. And that comes through prayer. That comes through worship. That comes through being in the presence of God. Kiera, not looking in the rear view mirror, but keeping my eyes on what's in front of me. That's good. Keeping your eyes on what's in front of you, keeping your ears attuned to what God is saying in your life, keeping your ears out of tune of the wrong people, talking to the wrong people on the phone, uh, sharing the, 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 the things that God is giving you deep in your heart with the wrong people. So when you tell them what God is telling you, the first thing they say is, you sure? You sure God told you to do that? Or, or, you know, that's the first thing, but you have to be so attuned to what God has for you that all you can say is, I'm, uh, I believe it. Now the Bible does say, sometimes we know in part, we hear in part, we see in part, but if God told you, and I got a song, I keep plugging this song. If God said it, he's going to do it. It's going to come to pass. You have to be under, you have to understand that what God says and his word will never return back to him void until it accomplishes the thing that it's been set out to accomplish. Tamara, intentional time with God is key. That is so true. We have to be intentional with our time with God so we can know that it's his voice. A lot of times, the reason why we can get easily put off of knowing God's voice is because we really don't know God's voice because we don't spend enough time knowing who he is and hearing him and submitting to him and doing the things. Renee, thank God for Jesus' mercy. When we fail, he will pick us up like Peter. That's right. Before we sing, that's good. Many times we don't know God's voice because we don't spend enough time with God. You don't know if God talked to you because you don't even know how he sounds. And so that's to us. If we want to get rid of distractions and we want to do what God is calling us to do first, we got to take time and sit in the presence of God. We have to get rid of the distractions that come to pull us out of the presence of God. Leave your phone outside of where you where you're going to be leave leave whatever it is that's around you so that you can do and you can just spend time with God. The kids might wake up early. Maybe you got to get up a little earlier. I'm speaking to myself too. Maybe I got to get up a little bit earlier to spend more time with God. Maybe I have to say, God, I'm going to give you this Tuesday and this Thursday, and I'm going to, I'm going to wake up and I'm really going to just spend some time with you. I'm going to take a moment when the kids are out um, you know, a daycare or, or whatever, I gotta get a moment when I'm cooking, when I'm cleaning, when I'm doing whatever I'm doing, I gotta take a moment to put on some worship music and just to just spend some time in your presence, just to let you know that I love you, let you know that I have a relationship with you, let you know that I'm listening for your voice. And here's the kicker y'all, when you're praying, you can't do all the talking. You can't do all the talking and expect God to speak back to you. You're talking too much to hear. You got to take some time. That's right, DJ. It's critical. We have to take some time to listen. 
I'm telling you, when I'm driving in my car, and I was talking to my friend yesterday, he was talking about how he, when he would drive, he's driving in his car, and it's quiet, that's when God will begin to speak. Kiera, sometimes people think that they are hearing from God, but it could be your own internal thoughts. Getting to know God is so important so you can hear him and not be so consumed in your own thoughts. That's right. Sometimes we hear ourselves. But most of the times what I understand when we listen to ourselves is it's normally what we want to hear. God doesn't say all the time what you want to hear. Sometimes it's the thing that you don't want to do that you're going to hear him say because it's the thing that you should be doing. But most of the times we listen to ourselves. And a lot of in another way, and this is a whole nother another study that we can get on. Another way, God will never um he will never go against his own word. So if you hear God speaking to you and it and it counters his word, it's probably not God. God is not speaking against his word or telling you to do something that's going to harm somebody else or any of those things. God is going to be a God of his word and his words are, are, are normally what you hear. Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's right. And so we have to discipline our ear. That's three so that we can hear God. And we can tune out the things that are not of God. Four, we have to deepen our well. What does that mean? Um, we de you deepen your well um, to hold more of God, to, to know more of God, to deepen your well for his power, his strength, his anointing. You do that through worship. You do that through reading the word of God. That's how you deepen your well to hold more of God. You want to be go deeper in him, you get deeper. You want to go deeper in God, it's time for you to get deeper. The reason why you're experiencing shallow relationship is because you're shallow. We're shallow, but we have, we're going to deepen our well or deepen our relationship with God. We have to deepen the well. We have to deepen ourselves to hold more of him. I was reading um, Benny Hinn's book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit, and it was just talking about how spending time in the presence of God, it deepens your will to hold more of God. When you don't spend time in his presence, when you're not reading your word, you're shallow. You don't have, there's not enough depth. Um, it's the same thing in, in a relationship with your spouse or with, with someone. The, the more you know about them, the deeper you can go because now you know more about them. You know what makes them happy. You know what makes them sad. You know what makes them feel a certain type of way. You know what gets them in the mood. You, you know all these things. So your will is deeper. And now you can hold more of emotionally, hold more of them. Well, God is the same way. If you don't know what makes him happy, you don't know what what, what grieves the Holy Spirit. You don't know, you know, what what upsets God. Uh, he is a jealous God. You know, you got to know these things to know more about God and to deepen your well, to hold more of him, to hold his spirit, to hold his anointing, to be overflow. Uh, the Bible talks about there are many fillings. So you get refilled, ask for him to fill you and to fill you again. And he will fill you when you when you ask him to do that. Fill me with your spirit, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let it be like living water that is overflowing. God, we want God to overflow so that we can give to other people. So you have to deepen your will. Make God that you're an appetite. You have to have a godly appetite. And the last thing is you have to lastly, diligently obey. If you are going to deepen your well, if you are going to live, uh, if you're going to live a distraction free life, understand there are distractions that come, but the distraction to deeper uh, will be alleviated when you diligently obey. So when God is telling you to do something, you have to diligently obey. When he's speaking to you and telling you it's time to do this or that, we have to diligently, dil diligently obey. I pray that um, this moment really assisted you and helped you um, in deepening your relationship with God and that God is calling for us to go deeper in him and to get rid of surface, get rid of our surface relationship. But God wants more. I'm telling you, if you're on right now and you're listening, if you're watching this, even if you're watching this in the replay, God is requiring more of us. 
He's requiring more of you. Let's go deeper in his, in his presence. Let's go deeper in the word. Let's experience a deeper level of relationship with God and watch what happens. I was studying this last thing uh, and I thought that was going to be the message. And I'm going to leave you with this. The disciples uh, were trying to cast out a demon uh, like Jesus. And the Bible says um, that Jesus said, let me see if I could bring it up because I was actually going to going to say this, um, Matthew 17, 19 through 21 in the King James version, it says, then came the disciples to Jesus, sorry Q, I didn't put this in notes apart and said, why could we not cast him out? This is Matthew 17, 19 through 21, King James version. Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. I wanted to tell you, tell you that because there is a level that God wants you to get to that a surface relationship will not get you to. The Bible said, Jesus said that you cannot cast out that demon, even though you have the authority to, you could not do that because this type of demon can be cast out by prayer and fasting. What that lets us know is that certain things come to the people who are willing to go deeper and that God is calling us from surface to a deeper relationship. That means um, to renew your mind. That means to push back your plate sometimes. That means that you got to pray. If you want more power, you have to go do a little bit more. If you want more anointing, that when that, that olive is pressed, it presses out the oil. If you want the anointing, there are certain things that you have to go through that you're going through. There are certain things that you have to experience. There are times where you have to push back your plate. There's times where you have to get up a little bit earlier and pray. If you want what God has for you, sometimes these some things that you, you want, you have to do a little bit more. This comes by fasting and praying. I'm able to cast out that demon. I'm able to walk in the authority that God has for me to walk by doing more go deeper and that's what it's all about renee some things only come by fasting and praying fasting and prayer is an intimate relationship with god that's good that's good we have to be intimate with god and that comes uh we said it before into me see that's he let him see and and that's how you get to that place sacrifice that's right make a sacrifice. They, in the Bible days before Jesus, they would sacrifice animals and sacrifice these things. Now we don't have to sacrifice those things. You know what we sacrifice? We sacrifice our lives. Bible says, be ye, um, uh, Romans 12, one and two, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. God does not want animal sacrifice anymore. He wants you. And he wants you to sacrifice your life, to sacrifice your own desires for his desires. And you watch what God will give you. You watch how you will be blessed because you are making a sacrifice for the Lord. You watch how when you sacrifice your desires, you sacrifice your money, you sacrifice your will, you sacrifice, like you said, Yomika, our flesh. When you sacrifice things that make you feel good for the calling of the king, watch what God does on your behalf. And so it is my prayer that we all, after this month, that we think about it different and we, we say we're going to go deeper. Hallelujah. We're going to go deeper in your presence, deeper in you, God. We're going to be who you've called us to be, and we're going to walk according to what you have for us to do. Even as we pray, Father, I ask that you bless each and every person that's watching this right now. Father, I ask you to give us the strength and the ability to do by your power to wake up a little bit earlier.
God, to uh, prick our hearts uh, like you've done me before. God, you wake me up even before the alarm hits. God, do it for us so that we may spend time in your presence and that we may make the sacrifice to go deeper and you will help us to drown out distractions so we can focus on you and not drown and not sink in the desires of this world. But Father, we thank you now for giving us even the want to even be on this Bible study, to learn a little bit more, to, to, to sharpen our swords a little bit more. And so, Father, we love you. We honor your name. It is in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody who jumped on tonight. Uh, it is about to be 830 once again, March the 10th. If you have already um, jumped on or got your ticket for for our renewal night with William McDowell. It's going to be amazing. Um, and uh, if you have not gotten it or you weren't able to get it this time, we are going to have an, we're going to do something else. And I'll show you what we're going to do a little bit later. Um, but please sign up, go to uh, the, our website, therenewalconference.com or go to my Facebook page. And yep, there it is. Q just put in the link. Go ahead and sign that up. And um, you can also watch online. I also have something special for those who can't get in the building, but you have to watch. I'm preparing. We're preparing. The team and I are preparing something pretty amazing for that for that experience. So uh, please jump on, sign on to that. And we can't wait to see you. And then at our next pop up, we don't have a date for that yet, but it's coming soon. Um, I would love my, my wife, Tamara, and I would love to see you in the room, in the building um, so that we can connect and have community. But until then, thank you guys once again. I hear my kids screaming upstairs with my wife, so I'm about to go relieve her. So thank you guys. Love you. Uh, have an amazing rest of your night. God bless you. See you.